Ryan Little. <laughs> Today I'm going to be talking about air frying. Now I've read comments in previous videos and talked to friends and people have questions about exactly what air frying is, how it works, the kind of things that you can actually air fry. So I'm going to be answering a lot of those questions today and I'm going to be talking you through two recipes with various applications. I'm going to show you how to bread cauliflower and tofu, how to air fry it, and I'm going to teach you a couple different applications. I'm going to do like a general so's version and a Nashville hot version. So stick around and I'll tell you all about it. So I want to start off by just telling you a little bit about what exactly air frying is. There's a few different types of air fryers on the market. Some of them have more of like an agitator situation. The ones that I'm familiar with are just a bunch of hot air spiling around. Uh, this here is my original air fryer. I've had this about two years. I saw it on TV, asked for it for Christmas, got it, and I've been using it three or four times a week since I've gotten it. The air fryer itself, uh, comes with a little basket like this, and this is the place where the food goes. As you can see, it's really not that large. It's only about the size of my hand. And what happens is this thing heats up, and a fan goes off, and it blows hot air all around the food, and it's able to crisp it up from the outside because air can get all around it. Uh, there is no oil that you actually add into this machine. It doesn't sort of aerate oil and spin it all around. That's not how this works. It's just hot air. So if you want any oil to make that surface more fried-like, it needs to have already oil on it, like on frozen foods that you may buy at the grocery store uh, or by adding a little bit of oil to the breading that you're putting on it. Now you can definitely air fry foods that don't have any breading. Just putting broccoli, cauliflower in here is amazing. It gets it nice and caramelized. But when you are breading, you do have to be careful. And I'm gonna be talking today about what you can and cannot do with the breading. Uh, in addition to this air fryer here, I actually received for Christmas this year a smart oven air which has an air fryer basket that is this size so as you can see there's a large difference uh i haven't used this that much i'm testing it out here uh, and i'll be cooking with this today as well as this one just to kind of show you the results of it so let's talk about breading for my breading station here i have gotten some cornstarch some panko bread crumbs and some garbanzo bean flour, as well as two different glass vessels. I'm gonna be using one for my batter and another for the panko. So this is gonna be my dredging station. The cornstarch, I'm not actually gonna be using that today. You could use that interchangeably with the um, garbanzo bean flour, or you could actually just kind of coat your tofu in uh, cornstarch, a very thin layer, and air fry it that way. And you'll have a fairly good result. You'll get it nice and crispy, but it won't have that kind of breading feel to it. So uh, again, I'm not going to be using this today, but it is an option. Maybe I'll talk about this in another video. So let's talk about these. Panko is a Japanese breadcrumb. It's got a bit of a larger crumb than maybe you're used to seeing. I prefer this because it gets nice and crispy in the air fryer and it's a blank canvas. It's not seasoned. You could use if you wanted uh, other seasoned breadcrumbs, just make sure that it's vegan. If you uh, look on the label, sometimes it has some uh, whey or some other random things thrown in there. But this is what's gonna be breading. And it's, it, like I said, it is kind of a larger crumb. You could throw this in a food processor, break it up if you wanted a finer grain. But um, this is just a breadcrumb. There's no oil, there's no seasoning, nothing on it. So you can add whatever flavors you want to it. I'm actually gonna be adding a little bit of oil to this, just maybe about a tablespoon or so, and mixing this through. The reason I'm doing this is it'll help with the browning process later. But again, I'm saving on the oil because I'm not going to be completely frying the dish. And I'm just adding a bit of salt to it because that panko doesn't have anything on it at all. So here it is, lightly oiled, a little bit of salt. The oil also helps the salt stick to the breadcrumb so it carries the flavor onto the dish. For the batter side of this, I'm going to be using chickpea flour. And I'm just going to measure out about a half of a cup here. And depending on how much you're gonna be breading, obviously you'd use more or less. It's kind of a little bit, it's almost equal portions of, oops, chickpea flour to water, um, but you want it to be the consistency of kind of a light pancake batter. So I poured out a little bit more than a half cup, but that's okay. Like I said, you want a bit about equal parts water or liquid to chickpea flour 
And I'm just gonna be adding a little bit of time at a time so I can get the lumps out. Traditional breading would probably be a, maybe a buttermilk or an egg mixture, but because this is completely vegan, we're gonna be using the chickpea flour in place of that. So it adds a lot of protein to the dish as well, uh, but it provides a really nice consistency for the breadcrumbs to stick. All right, so as you can see here, it is a thin batter. It lightly coats the fork. You don't want it to be too, too thick, uh, and it will thicken up slightly as it sits. This tastes terrible as it is. You can season it. I'm gonna add a little bit of salt to this um, for this first step that I'm gonna be doing here. But if you taste it, it's gonna be very bitter. That flavor completely disappears when it cooks. So don't worry if you taste it and it tastes completely revolting. Well, here we have our basic breading and our batter. Like I said, you can add seasonings to this. You could spice up those breadcrumbs however you'd like. You could even add a lot more seasoning to the batter portion. You could add hot sauce or other types of seasonings. Try to get like a KFC kind of seasoning to it if you wanted. Uh, it just depends on what you're going to be breading. Like I said, today we're going to be breading tofu and cauliflower. Uh, I'm gonna be, be, gonna be doing two different applications of that. First one, I need it plain, so let's proceed with battering. The first recipe I'm gonna be making is my General Tso's Tofu and Cauliflower. Uh, notice I have frozen cauliflower here. There is a concept called cryoblanching, and cryoblanching essentially means that you're blanching by freezing. The uh, water molecules inside of the food, when they freeze, expand, and it kind of breaks up the uh, structure of the items so that it kind of is like cooking them slightly. So these are gonna cook a lot faster because they're frozen, so that's why I'm gonna be using them here. So I'm gonna just be tossing some of this cauliflower into the batter. I'm gonna be, I only have about a half of a bag left and I'll be saving the other half for my Nashville hot. But just throwing these in here. They're smaller pieces, which is kind of nice. Just gonna toss these around so that I can get them fully coated. I'm doing this while they're still frozen also. Doesn't really matter. They won't release too much liquid as they cook and mess up the breading. So when breading, you normally wanna have a wet hand and a dry hand. So I'm just gonna use my hands to plop these over into the breadcrumbs. And then with my dry hand, I'm just gonna kinda of toss these in the breadcrumbs so they get evenly coated. And you may have to add more breadcrumbs depending on how many you're doing. There's nothing worse than having wasted breadcrumbs. So only use what you think you're going to need so you don't have to throw out any. It doesn't really save once you've added battered food to it. And then I'm just gonna be adding these to a pan here. This is not what I will be cooking it on. I'm just setting these aside so when I get everything prepared, I can just air fry them all at once. This is similar to a, the recipe that I made a few videos ago. Uh, it was a mac and cheese with a uh, oven fried tofu. Very similar battering. We're just going to be um, air frying these instead of baking. And the tofu and the cauliflower should cook about the same time. It's mostly just about cooking the breading on the outside um, and making sure that the batter is done. All right, so there's a the cauliflower. I'm gonna move on to the tofu. I'm gonna to be doing the same thing with the tofu. This is a super firm tofu. So like I said, I didn't really have to drain it at all, but same process. I'm just gonna go through this, coat these in the batter and then throw them into the breadcrumbs and add them to my tray. All right, well, I'm done battering these. These are pretty plain, just salt. Uh, these are gonna be for the generals, uh, tofu and cauliflower. Uh, I would also use this if I wanted to do a, maybe a buffalo wing style, that I would do the same type of application, I could toss it with that, that sauce afterwards. But, so I'm just gonna set this aside and move on to my Nashville hot. So for the Nashville hot, uh, normally the hot for the Nashville hot chicken comes from this oil with a bunch of uh, cayenne pepper and paprika uh, that's added to the top of the chicken once it's cooked. Well, 
instead of adding this big oily mixture because we're air frying, trying to cut down a little bit on the oil, we're going to be adding all those seasonings to the batter. Hopefully those flavors then will carry through to the final product. So with this here, I have probably, I don't know, just a little bit more than a half cup or so of this batter remaining. Uh, and I'm gonna be adding a spice blend here in just a second. So this spice blend here is a lot of cayenne pepper, paprika, sugar, brown sugar, I mean, salts, some garlic powder. I'll have the full recipe for what's in here down below. Now this is enough, uh, the recipe I, I read called for, for one cup of oil. Uh, so I have just probably about a half cup of batter left here. So I'm gonna be adding probably just about, I don't know, maybe only about a quarter up to half of this seasoning mixture to the batter. This is supposed to be really hot. This is supposed to be so fiery that you just keep eating more and more and more in order to get the hot out of your mouth. Uh, as you can see, I'm a little bit thick here, so I think I'm gonna add just a little bit of water to thin things down. Now, like I said, the chickpea flour is disgusting at this point, but I do wanna taste it a little bit just to see if my spice level is where I want it to be uh, and to make sure that it is seasoned properly. So once I get this all stirred together, I will be doing a little taste. I think I'm gonna add just a little bit more, uh, but that flavor is so good. Uh, I mean, of course, the chickpea flour kind of brings it down, but checking for the spice level and everything seems to be good, but I'm gonna add a bit more, get it a little bit fiery. So I'm definitely at half that mixture right now. This recipe here has four tablespoons of cayenne pepper in it, so at this point, Within here, you're looking at two tablespoons of cayenne pepper. If you're not a fan of heat, uh, you might want to cut that down, taste it, see if it's to your liking. I'm just going to add a bit more panko here just to make sure that I'm going to fully cover everything. And just a little bit more oil. And another pinch of salt. Also, just like if you were doing a flour breading, as you do your uh, dredge and breading, you'll notice that there gets to be some chunks. Um, they just add a little bit of texture to the final product, so don't be afraid if some clumps show up in your breadcrumbs. Oops, a little bit of frost in there. See, I'm getting to the bottom of the bag, but that's okay. These will be great. They'll be like little popcorn, cauliflower, Nashville hot bites. Look at all that spice. And be careful with handling this with all the spice. You wanna make sure you wash your hands before you touch your eyes or any other body part. At this point, you've seen me batter now three times, so I'm just gonna be taking this tofu and doing it one last time in the spicy mixture. Also, this batter saves pretty well. So if you batter a few things up and you have some left over, you can just save it in the fridge and it'll last a few days in there so you could batter up more stuff the next day. And here we have the two trays of breaded items. Normally you'd probably just do the cauliflower or just do the tofu, but I wanted to show you again that you could apply this to different kinds of items. Um, the hot again is gonna go into the air fryer, fry up, and I'm actually gonna make you a ranch dressing sauce to dip them in while they cook. The other ones, very plain, we're gonna be tossing them in a general sauce to make sort of like a general sauce, tofu, cauliflower. You could use that same application, like I said, for a buffalo wing or top mint, Toss them in teriyaki sauce. 
they're just like a really nice plain oven or uh, air fried uh, item that you can do a lot with. So let's start cooking. I'm gonna be doing a majority of the air frying in this smart oven air. I'm going to be putting it onto air fry, which you can see says super convection. And I'm gonna be having it at 400 degrees and I'm just gonna turn up the time. I'm not sure how long it'll exactly take, but just press start and it'll preheat. I'm gonna be loading up the air fryer basket here over the sink, just so that if there's any pieces that fall through, they go into the sink. They can be fairly close together. You just don't want them touching. And I'm just gonna be putting the cauliflower and tofu on here at the same time. They should cook around the same. If not, I can just take some things off. The Nashville hot tofu, I'm gonna to be adding here along with the plain seasoned ones that'll later become the General's tofu and cauliflower, just because these pieces are larger and they're gonna cook around the same time. Like I said, I'm gonna be using the other air fryer as well, and I'll just use that for these smaller pieces of cauliflower that'll be sort of my spicy popcorn cauliflower. And then I'll separate them in the end and treat them to their two separate sauces. The smaller cauliflower pieces are now in this air fryer. As you can see also, they are not overlapping. I want them to not touch so that all the air can get around every side. Pop it into a little container, throw it in here. This doesn't necessarily need to preheat. I'm gonna be having it on its highest setting, which is just 390. And I'm gonna put it in here for probably about 15 minutes, check it every once in a while, give it a little bit of a toss. The air fryer is preheated and I'm going to be throwing these in here. It'll probably take about 15, 20 minutes to cook all of them. And I might be even flipping them over halfway through just to make sure they do get browned on all sides, even though air is coming from all directions. The pieces that I put in here were really small and they're gonna be cooking fairly quickly. Uh, they're already actually pretty crispy, even after just being in here like five or six minutes. I'm just giving them a toss and I'll put them back in for a few more minutes. The cauliflower pieces that are in this smaller air fryer are, are actually done already. And it's only been maybe, I wanna say like 10, 11 minutes. You can hear that crispy sound. The benefits of this smaller air fryer, I feel things do cook a lot faster. It's smaller, the air circulates at a higher temperature maybe, or I'm just not sure what exactly caused it, but things cook a little bit more quickly in this than the larger one, which is nice because you can cook more things, it just takes a little bit longer. And I'm not sure the impact of the air is as strong, but so these are already ready to go. I'm gonna set these aside, just kind of leave them in here to stay warm while the others finish up. So I wanna just flip some of these over just to make sure that they are browning on all sides. They should theoretically brown everywhere because of the air fry, but let me do this over the sink actually. These have been cooking for probably about 20 minutes. I did flip them halfway through. They are finished now, so I'm gonna just turn them off and show you here that they are nice and brown. Probably can't hear it, but they're really nice and crispy as well. I'm gonna be leaving these in the uh, air oven here just while I prepare the sauces so that they stay warm and crispy. Had I not been filming, I would have been making this next sauce and the sauce after it while these air fried, but because of the sound, I didn't want to try to explain these sauces while they cook. So I'm gonna be assembling the first sauce, which is a ranch dressing. This ranch dressing is very easy. I already have a cup of veganaise in this jar and I have a thing of Kite Hill plain almond yogurt. Now you need about a half cup of this. You don't really wanna use a Greek yogurt or anything for this because you want it to be kind of liquidy. Uh, this is what's gonna be replacing the buttermilk that would normally be in a ranch dressing. So it'll have the tanginess. Uh, about a half cup worth, which is most of the container. I do have soy milk here on reserve in case I do need to thin it out a bit more. These are the spices. I have dried parsley, dried uh, dill, onion powder, garlic powder, salt, lots of black pepper. I'll have the full directions in the uh, comments below. And there's a little bit of mushroom broth powder. It just adds a bit of, I hate to say it, a little MSG flavor, which is kind of what gives most ranch dressings its flavor. So that little bit of mushroom broth powder, you can admit, add maybe a little bit of nutritional yeast for that same kind of flavor, or again, just admit it all to, uh, omit it all together. But I'm just gonna toss this in here as well. 
Put this lid on, shake it up. Seems pretty well combined. Texture is nice and thick. I don't think I'm gonna add any soy milk to it at all. So you do wanna let this probably chill a little bit before you use it, even though it is good to go right now. Letting it sit for a couple hours will definitely mend the flavors together. In this measuring cup here, I have the ingredients for the sauce for my generals, tofu and cauliflower. Uh, the whole instruction uh, and all the ingredients are in the description below. Uh, focusing on the air fryer with this recipe video, so uh, I didn't wanna spend too much time prepping this. So I'm just gonna pour this into a pot or a pan, excuse me. And this just needs to simmer for probably about two minutes until it thickens up. And then I'm gonna add some of these chilies in here to add a little bit of spice. Once it's thickened and nice and bubbly, then I can start to toss the pieces of tofu and cauliflower in it. As you can see, this is thickened up immensely. It's cleared out. The cornstarch uh, is no longer cloudy and it's just thickened up the whole sauce. I'm gonna add just a couple of these hot dried chilies. These are optional. You could just use chili flake as well if you wanted. I'll just put some four in there. It should add a nice heat. I'm just gonna let this continue to thicken for another couple minutes, spice up a bit, and then I will be tossing in my air fried tofu and cauliflower. This sauce is super bubbly, caramelized, heat's transferred into a little bit. I'm going to turn off the flame and just go ahead and drop in all of my air fried pieces, making as big of a mess as I can by getting small panko pieces everywhere. I'm just gonna toss this best I can. Might even do a little trickery here just to get everything evenly coated. The sugars in the sauce should be good for, just they're gonna be caramelized so they shouldn't affect the coating too much. They should still stay nice and crispy throughout once it looks nice and coated. Right, everything is nice and coated. So I'm just going to add this to a serving dish. And then I'll garnish it in just a moment. I'm just garnishing with some green onion and some sesame seeds. And here we have our air fried cauliflower and tofu turned into General's tofu and cauliflower. Here we have air fried cauliflower and tofu treated like Nashville hot chicken with a side of homemade ranch dressing. So there's a few things that I wanted you to take away from this video. Uh, one thing is about the cauliflower, frozen cauliflower, the whole concept of cryo blanching. It really cuts down on the cooking time, especially if you're doing an air frying type of procedure. If you use frozen, it's pretty much already three quarters of the way cooked. You just have to warm it up, crisp up the breading and you're done. Another thing is I used two different types of air fryers. I used a smaller Philips version and a larger smart oven air version. Smart oven air is great, especially if you're cooking a large quantity of things that you're trying to air fry and get crispy. The only thing is I feel like it takes a little bit longer and it doesn't necessarily have that tightness of space that helps things to just get a little bit more evenly crisped up. So. Whatever you have, I mean, both of these recipes are going to work in it. Um, just you may have some very different results and some cooking time differences, uh, depending on which type of air fryer you do have. So most likely you're not gonna be cooking both of these at the same time. <clears throat> Excuse me. I just wanted to show you that you can do a preparation like this, which is more of like a fried nugget dipper type of situation, or even your favorite fried Chinese dish that, uh, you don't have to actually fry. Save a lot of calories in terms of the oil and a lot of fat, especially if you're doing some type of oil-free diet, and you can definitely get the flavors and taste that you're used to in a healthier way. So 
Uh, let's go ahead and give these dishes a taste. Uh, I'm gonna start here with the General's Tofu. Uh, remember I did use a super firm tofu for this. Um, it's usually not packed in water, it's in a shrink wrapped package and it just has a very meaty texture. Sorry about the big bite. Hmm. That is just like takeout. That sauce, you bread whatever you want. You could even bread broccoli, bread this tofu, bread all the cauliflower. Who knows, anything that would sit still long enough for you to bread, you could do this preparation, toss it in that sauce, is gonna be incredible. Um, I'm gonna try a smaller piece of the cauliflower here. It has the heat of your traditional Nashville style seasoning, uh, but the fact that it's inside under the breading makes it a, a little bit more palatable. It doesn't attack you with that heat on the surface. You could easily take that same seasoning mixture, mix it with oil and turn it into a drizzle on top, but doing it inside like this just makes it a lot easier. And again, it saves a lot of the oil. Uh, the ranch dressing too, kind of a bonus. This is my favorite go-to ranch dressing uh, recipe. It's better than any bottled store-bought ranch that I've found. So. I hope you try this out. I hope you experiment with the air fryer. It's one of my favorite appliances of all time and I can't get enough of it. So try these out, tag me in them if you do, uh, take pictures, put them on Instagram. I'm at Munson Made This. Um, you can also use hashtag Munson Made This. Follow this channel. If you like this video, definitely give it a thumbs up. Watch all my other videos and share this around. I wanna grow this channel. I want other people to see what great food you can make vegan and healthy. So share it with your friends, tell them about this, and I will see you next week for a brand new recipe video.